I apologize for for barging in on you. We're we also have the Patriot Act on the floor, and I'm involved with that. So we're trying to do about five things, five things at once, as often happens. But it's it's good to be here at the third annual State of the Mobile Net Conference. I know Jerry Berman, who dedicated chairman of the advisory committee, Tim Lorden, Kazuma Masuda, all of you worked so hard on this, and I appreciate that, as well as my congressional chairs, Henry Thune and Representative Eshu and Representative Goodlot, uh, make a great team. We would go across the aisle. When we first started doing this, I had to go, every senator had a computer in their office, and I had to kind of go to some of my fellow senators and explain to them that, that you know, that TV set you got in your office that doesn't get any stations, it's not a TV set. Let me explain how it works. And um, so we've, we've, got that, we've got that working, and, and it's interesting when people find how well it works, so much so that we, you know, we have a rule against uh, computers on the Senate floor, and, Every so often you feel a tap on your shoulder as you're double checking your Blackberry or your iPad or whatever to see what's going on. You really should do that in the cloakroom, but. Uh, you know, in 1963, Chief Justice Earl Warren said that the fantastic advances in the field of electronic communications constitute a greater danger to the privacy of the individual. That was in 63. That was a uh, year before I was admitted to the bar, and nobody could have foreseen what we have today. But what he said about the threats to our digital privacy, I think still ring true today. Uh, if, you, um, if you find that everywhere you go somewhere, it's tracked every time you buy gasoline, go to the grocery store, it's tracked, what you're doing is tracked. Or worse yet, if what you're reading, what you're um, buying may be tracked and, and then used in the wrong way, either to steal from you or to uh, put you in a pigeonhole. One of the examples we use is somebody, and this was in the Patriot Act, uh, what happens if a kid in school was assigned to write an article on Osama bin Laden. And they go and get all the material they can on Osama bin Laden, and that flags something. And then a few years later, when they're up for a promotion in a company with defense contracts, they're told, well, you can't have the promotion. Why can't I? We can't tell you. We want to keep make, make sure we don't, we don't get into those kind of situations. In the past few weeks, we learned that smartphones and Mobile applications may be collecting and using and storing our location. Other sensitive information, I, I find that of concern. And I find the, uh, when some of the big companies first uh, said, we're not doing that, and when they said, well, we are, but here's our reasons, and the reasons kept changing, it makes me worried. Um, a recent survey found 38% of American smartphone users identified privacy as their number one concern with using mobile applications. Now, to give you an idea where Vermont comes from in these things, I live on a dirt road in Vermont, an old tree farm that we got when I was a teenager, hundreds of acres of land. Um, there's a neighboring farm family that for several generations have hayed the field. They've known me since I was in high school. This article was written in the New York Times. It's the only thing I've actually saved from the press and even framed up and put on the wall. And it goes like this. A person in an out-of-state car, Saturday morning, drives up the dirt road, asks old farmer, Senator Leahy live up this road. He said, you a relative of his? He said, well, no. You a friend of his? Well, not really. Is he expecting you? No. Never heard of him. And that's the way, even though we've always had a listed home phone number, we just don't list the address. So now what, when we had in the Senate Judiciary Committee, we held this hearing on mobile private, uh, privacy. I think Congress should be updating the Electronic Communications Privacy Act, ECPA, uh, so it keeps pace with new technologies. 
I introduced the Electronic Communications Privacy Act, Amendments Act of 2011, the bill that makes the first comprehensive changes to ECPA since that law was enacted. There are several people in this room who have offered ideas on that, uh, and a lot of those ideas have been incorporated. You know, we wrote this law in 1986. It doesn't seem, you remember, and it doesn't seem possible. Think of all the changes since then. Email was still a novelty. Cell phones were these great big things about the size of a shoebox. No one could have imagined the kind of mobile apps put the internet at our fingertips anywhere we go. And so the bill I've introduced would strengthen the privacy protections of email and other electronic communications. It would require that the government obtain a search warrant based on probable cause to gain access to the content of electronic communication. The same way if they wanted to go into your house and find what's in your filing cabinet, they'd have to get a search warrant. Well, they want to, if your filing cabinet is the uh, cell phone you're holding or is your iPad, they ought to have the same requirement. They give consumers new privacy protection for their location information by requiring the government obtain either a search warrant or a court order under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act to gain access to that. And it would require a search warrant before they can track us in real time. Now, we also mean, as we go, as we expand the net, information is more vulnerable to cybercrime. A recent report by the computer security firm Symantec found that more than 286 million new kinds of malware were detected in 2010. I know the enormous firewalls we use uh, in our office, and people still try to get through as they do at the Department of Defense, the Department of Justice, CIA, and everywhere else. So these will give us new tools uh, for that. So I, I mentioned this, I, I'm not gonna go into a whole compilation of every part of the, of the bill, but we have, we have reasons to be concerned about our privacy. We can do our law enforcement things, we can keep our country safe, we can go after terrorists, but we shouldn't have to give up our own personal privacy. We shouldn't have to give up things that we would never think of doing in a non-electronic world. We shouldn't have to do it in an electronic world. So I thank you all very much for having me here. And I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.